Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Slam Bolt Scrappers. This is a new Tetris style battle slash puzzle game that's just come out on Steam. It's kind of like a, a very quick paced version of Tetris. Uh, I, admittedly, A, I'm pretty bad at Tetris, B, I've never played games like Tetris Attack, so I have no idea how similar it is to stuff like that, uh, but it feels very derivative of some puzzle games that I've played before in the past, especially, you know, puzzle games that require you to play against somebody in a multiplayer format, uh, but it does have a few unique twists. This is actually from Firehose Games, who released both this Slam Bolt Scrappers and Go Home Dinosaurs on exactly the same day, which is kind of a weird marketing strategy for me. And not to spoil things here, but uh, while I liked Go Home Dinosaurs a lot more than I thought I would, Slam Bolt Scrappers hasn't really resonated with me in the same way. But in the meantime, um, we're gonna pick a character here, so it does kind of have like a fighting game style. I don't know if these characters actually have like unique traits associated with them, or if it's just some kind of like aesthetic thing. I've been playing primarily as Bomac here, uh, but why don't we play as uh, Slim? And we'll start up. So there is, a, like, multiplayer capabilities here. Uh, but I've not yet been able to convince anybody to play sa Slam Bolt Scrappers with me. So we're gonna move around here. <clears throat> I should mention I am playing on the PC, but I am indeed using the Xbox 360 controller. And I gotta say that I think the, uh, interface here, it kinda looks a little cheap. It, it reminds me a little bit of, like, flying the high wind after the engines went out in Final Fantasy VII over that overworld. I don't know what it is, but the, the colors just don't look right. It kind of looks like a, a PS2 era game or something like that. But in any case, why don't we just take a, a fairly early level here. Also, it's kind of difficult to tell, like, visually which levels are which. I mean, I get that the one up top is going to be, like, higher and you can actually see the numbers, but, you know, beyond that, it's sometimes a little bit difficult to tell. Uh, anyway, why don't we play on the normal difficulty here, and I will try to play and talk about what we're doing at the same time. Basically, this is a Tetris game plus beat-em-up. So we're gonna be, uh, punching not only the enemy there, uh, who is controlled by the AI right there, but we're gonna be controlling, or we're gonna be punching random enemies as well, and these enemies will be dropping blocks that we will be able to, uh, place on our own side. And if we make Tetronominoes or various, uh, four-sided shapes, then we'll be able to create these weapons. These weapons will then shoot at our enemy, uh, and you lose if you have no uh, turrets left on your side. So if all of my turrets die, then uh, the enemy will succeed. Although I have not, as of yet, lost a game of Slam Bolt Scrappers. That's not to say I'm an amazing player. More likely, I think, at least so far, uh, is that the game starts off with a very gentle learning curve, which might, you know, again, be indicative of the game's somewhat casual nature. Anyway, let's place this here. So, I, I don't really have, uh, to me so far, the strategy doesn't seem as deep as something like Tetris, because you don't really have to worry about, you know, like, making sure that your, uh, your board is, like, well-placed, because there's no long-term ramifications, as long as you can continue to make, uh, you know, Tetris-style shapes, you can continue making, uh, damage to your enemy, basically, and the size of the shape that you make is also, uh, representative of the size of the turret that you will get. So, I, I will talk a little bit more about this actual, like, real kind of beat-em-up style system that we've got going on here when you're attacking enemies, but it's kind of not important yet. It might be important in the future, but as of right now, uh, at least at this point in the game, there haven't been too many situations where I've really uh, had to fight the enemy all that often. There are boss fights in the game, I, and we'll show those off, and I appreciate those. There is also a combo system that we can use, uh, and we just killed that guy, so he's probably gonna lose right here, because as you can see, he has very few turrets left, so I'm just discarding all of the blue ones, because I feel like I don't need them, and instead we're just gonna place red ones, which are gonna allow me to create some pretty sizable turrets, I think he's gonna die any second now. Uh, also the gimmick of just like switching back and forth from side to side here seems a little bit superficial for me, but who am I to say, right? Uh, so I got a shield there, but anyway, that is over with. So that's the basic premise of Slam Bolt Scrappers. It's a competitive puzzle game where you uh, beat up enemies to gain tetronominoes and then you place those tetronominoes to create turrets. So why don't we try Island 3, if we will. Um, so yeah, and by placing those tetronominoes we create turrets. These turrets will eventually destroy our enemies uh, in glory of the fatherland here. So let's kill Mr. Purple and we'll try to make some uh, sweet turrets here again. Uh, you know, you do have the option to discard, and when you discard, it's not just that you get rid of a piece that you might not want, you also get a little bit of a personal health bonus. By the way, this is pretty, uh, representative of, of the AI I've been dealing with so far. Dude just stands there while I punch him. There is a block button, but, uh, I guess the AI feels like, you know, like Josh, Josh in the showdown effect that, uh, the block button is just kind of a waste of your mental efforts. But in any case, I have not had too much trouble, uh, winning basically every fight that I have been a part of in Slam Bolt Scrappers. I have occasionally lost health, and by the way, I'm just abusing the same combo over and over. By using the A and X buttons on the Xbox 360 controller, you can, uh, perform combos, uh, but there's only three combos that the game has shown me. 
We can beat up these ninjas. This ninja will give us some power up. I'm not sure what it'll be. Uh, we'll get it in a second. In the meantime, I'm just going to continue creating some turrets. But really, so far, it's so casual that I haven't really needed to execute any strategy at all in order to succeed. I guess that's some kind of repair. Uh, it's going to repair our turrets, I guess. Uh, which is cool, I suppose. We do also have a mechanic where we can kind of adjust blocks, but I haven't really found a good opportunity to use that yet. Let's just try to steal this piece from him. There we go. He's deceased. The AI, well, not just the AI, but these uh, enemies that you see will do damage to our turrets as well. They, they, each one has, like, each color associates with a different kind of um, projectile or, you know, style of attack, like a flamethrower or a, you know, what have you. I've created an enormous drill turret here, which is going to be awesome. Let's talk a little bit more about this beat em up style, because I just died totally in contrast to what I was saying earlier. But we will restart. I'm about to win, though. Um, basically, you have a block and a very rudimentary combat system. When you kill the enemy, you can take their piece, and additionally, uh, you can... Uh, they'll, they'll have a period where they won't be respawning. And if you're not be able to respawn, that creates a pretty difficult situation for you, uh, as it becomes very difficult to kind of continue to place turrets, and that's what really when you can make progress against the enemy. So I'm going to play this level called the Skyscraper. This is one of the boss battles and kind of different levels in Slam Bolt Scrappers that makes it kind of unique, if not, you know, wholly good. It is at the very least interesting that levels like this uh, are included in the game. Now here's a, a problem, legitimately. Those are blue, but I, I don't know if it's like blue blue or if it's light blue, because there's two different shades of blue that are going to be um, common here, if that makes sense. Let's try to place this and we'll see. I'm not sure if that would have affected anything. Let's take this big, long piece, and that should allow us... Okay, so it's blue-blue. That's good. Because then we can place another one, like here, create turrets. So our, our basic premise on this level, we're not actually, you know, going up against a combative enemy. We're mostly... Oh, let's take this and discard it, I guess. Um, we're just trying to kill all of these waves of enemies on each, like, set of the skyscraper. Uh, and then later... Hmm, let me think about this. Later, we will, yes, get rid of this, um, be able to, to fight a boss. Sorry if it seems like my commentary is getting a little bit disjointed. This is a game where, you know, you're trying to focus and play at the same time, and that can be a little bit difficult. Let's just place that in there. Why don't we place this in there? Those square blocks actually become, like, the new long piece in terms of value, because they actually uh, create a turret individually, just by being placed once, which is obviously excellent. That guy was a total douchebag and ruined that turret setup that I have, but I can compensate by doing that and creating a fairly large red turret. Uh, so it, it's neat that the game has levels like this. I don't think they 100% work. Like, these levels actually, to me, seem the most interesting, but also by far the most tedious, which is uh, probably, if I had to guess, not the reaction that the game designers were looking for, um, but that is my personal opinion on it. It's weird because, you know, when, when I looked at these two games and I was like, okay, these are coming out, uh, I, I really thought Go or yeah, Go Home Dinosaurs looked super derivative, and this looked at least kind of interesting, at least more my style. And I guess that wasn't 100% wrong. Go Home Dinosaurs is totally derivative, but it's actually very I have positive experience with that game so far. Uh, whereas with Slam Bolt Scrappers, uh, also you know fairly unoriginal, although you know a for effort with respect to trying to get these beat 'em up elements working there, uh, but also substantially less fun. At least in my personal opinion. So we're just going to beat these dudes up, we're going to take these pieces, and uh, we're going to set them down. Which pretty much describes Slam Bolt Scrappers in a nutshell. Uh, but we will have a boss fight momentarily that we can go through. By the way, I mean, the, the boss fight element is cool, but a major complaint with it, and I think this is totally valid, is that... Uh, you know, you when you die, you just have a respawn timer, so I don't even know if it's possible to lose to the bosses. It might be possible to lose to them the same way you lose to enemies, just by having no turrets left on your screen. But I have not gotten anywhere near that point in, uh, you know, about an hour of play so far. Uh, so, I, I don't know if that can ever happen, if I'm being honest. Uh, I, I would like a little bit more challenge on this, and I mean, I realize I'm being a little bit hypocritical there because I'm playing on normal, but, uh, you know, that being said, I still do expect the normal modes in the game that I'm playing, uh, you know, given the normal modes of your standard game, uh, to be a little bit more challenging than this is. So I suppose I should just stop crying and crank out the difficulty a little bit. But that being said, it is still a negative, in my opinion, if a game's normal mode isn't well-balanced for difficulty. Just, it's kind of a cop-out. It's a nice addition, but it's also kind of a cop-out to say, like, oh, well, just crank out the difficulty if you don't like it. Maybe it's a good solution, but at the same time, I, I don't think it creates necessarily uh, the best user experience. So let's punch this dude down. 
Uh, our boss is probably going to show up now. Indeed he does. And this could take us a little while. I think this level, as you saw, it took us like eight minutes the first time. I do kind of like the art design. It's a little bit weird and, I don't know, Greco-Roman, but it seems kind of cool. Uh, by the way, by picking up these transparent blocks, we can kind of, like, atone for mistakes we made earlier uh, and, and get pieces back. Like, this should create a shocking turret for us. Uh, and we are almost certainly going to die here in a second, but let me just get rid of that. And then we'll switch it around like that. So those transparent pieces allow us to rearrange the board, basically. Uh, but in the meantime, we're just going to place down some, uh, basically as many turrets as we can. Don't get hit by that, if at all possible. Again, we can digest these puzzle pieces uh, just to pick up some uh, uh, free health if we want to. And every boss has a gimmick, so we're just going to watch this boss kind of wreck our turrets, I guess. Um, the, this boss's gimmick is that we don't actually attack the boss, we're supposed to attack the cloud. And by attacking the cloud, uh, the boss will eventually be put in a vulnerable position where our towers will actually do damage. Because as you can see right now, uh, his holiness is not being damaged. I'm just going to put this here so we have a bigger turret when we come back. Uh, his holiness is not actually being damaged because he has that shield. But, now that he has been hurt, our turrets should be able to do a substantial amount of damage to him. Uh, I don't know if I can do damage in this situation, but my turrets definitely can. Uh, although it seems, for the most part, they chose not to. Nah, we did, you know, like maybe 25% of his health there. That's okay. Uh, we'll put one here. I don't know if that's ever gonna work out for us, but we'll put another one down. Like so, I guess. And, uh, so, you know, you need an interesting variety of strategy here. You need to, uh, you know, pay attention to both your person and your, uh, your turrets. Because you want to be placing turrets at all times, but you also want to be kind of actively going over here and punching this cloud and then not getting hit yourself, which is uh, apparently more difficult. Uh, but it's a very superficial and thin layer of strategy that I would say. Just make no mistake, a, a lot of the things that I'm kind of being negative about this game for are just kind of a byproduct, byproduct of its casual nature, and that is totally fine. I have nothing against casual games by any stretch of the imagination. I just kind of feel like this is not a great casual game. But it does have, uh, you know, certain kind of unique elements. I just can't imagine people playing it, if that makes sense. Like, I, I can't imagine who would be, like, sitting down in their house and be like, okay, let's play some Slam Bolt Scrappers. Uh, you know, beyond people who, you know, do things like what I do and are like, hey, can we play Slam Bolt Scrappers? I really need to see how the multiplayer works before I do the video. Um, I'm just gonna put that down there and I'm gonna try to take that. Oh, that was not what I wanted to do. Okay, one second here. Oh, we'll just put it there. Perfect. Also, the control scheme is a little weird, like, it says controller recommended, so I'm using a controller, but I don't necessarily understand why. I mean, I guess it has beat-em-up elements, which sometimes uh, necessitate the use of a controller, or at least make the use of a controller highly incentivized. Uh, but at the same time, it, it feels like this could control totally fine on the PC, who knows, man. We died again, and this again is a, kind of a sore spot for me, where I'm like, okay, so the bosses kill us, but when they kill us, we don't actually die. Again, that, that, that seems just kind of... Uh, indicative of the casual nature of the game, so maybe I shouldn't be as surprised by that as I actually am. There we go, he's been hurt, and when he gets hurt, that means we can actually do some damage to him with our rockets here. That actually did a surprising amount of damage as well. Um, but in the meantime, we'll just let these guys keep going to town. Fairly shortly, we should be able to kill him, and then we can show off some of the other modes in the game. Um, there is a battle mode. I'm not 100% sure if there's online multiplayer. Online multiplayer seems like it could be one of those things. Uh, I'm not gonna say necessarily that saves the game, because, uh, you know, one, that implies that the game needs saving. Two, that implies that online multiplayer is possibly more, uh, conducive towards success than not having it, which I don't always believe is the case. Uh, but let's, let's go back out here and we'll see. There's definitely a battle mode. So I'm, I'm trying to go back here. Let's check out the battle mode. I'm not sure if it's just battling against the AI or if, if it's just local multiplayer. If I had to guess, I would say it's probably just local multiplayer. Like this interface, this interface to me where you just kind of control what is, for lack of a better word, a mouse pointer uh, and pick something on the screen, this doesn't seem like controller designed to be. And that's cool because the game is on PC, but I don't understand why it's controller recommended. Most games when you use a controller, and this is totally nitpicking, but the, instead of having like a pointer like this, uh, that you control with your left analog stick, you just kind of like have a toggle and you go like ting, 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 ting. And that, you know, th that interface is much better. But in any case, let's go with island here. Choose blocks, um, you know, random, I guess. If I could get my sensitivity so high, sure. Uh, and we'll move on to the next stage. And again, I, it doesn't appear that there's any online multiplayer. But I guess we can play against the computer here. We can play a team battle if we want to. Uh, can we just start? Free for all? 
Uh, I, I guess you can't start if you only have one person, so you can't, I guess, play against the AI? If you're playing by yourself, which kind of sucks, I guess, but, you know, to be fair to the game, almost every single level in the campaign is, um... You know, just a level where you're battling against the computer. So honestly, com with respect to Slam Bolt Scrappers here, I don't know how much more there is to show. Uh, this is available on Steam. I believe it is $10. Uh, and if you're going to pick up one casual game this week, I don't think Slam Bolt Scrappers should be it. I think you should probably go for Go Home Dinosaurs if you're a fan of tower defense games. Uh, but in any case, if you uh, manage to navigate here just looking for an opinion on this game uh, as to whether or not you should buy it on Steam, I'm going to give this a, a mild thumbs down. I kind of feel like it's, uh, it's unpolished, it's very simplistic, and the beat-em-up elements seem kind of tacked on. Uh, the fighting system, I didn't talk about it too, too much, but it is very, very simplistic and, and crude, which is not necessarily horrible and, you know, not damning for the developers either, but at the same time, most of the time that I've spent with this game has been pretty boring so far, and that is the, you know, most damning thing that I could possibly say about it. But in any case, there will be a link in the video description to check out Slam Bolt Scrappers on Steam if you are interested. In any case, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.